Right, so we've got this nice shot of this pizza here. Most of the things, of course, will be done from the bottom menu here. But let's also just quickly talk about some of the options on the top here. So you mainly basically have one option right now, which is the you know little wand-like thing that you see here, magic wand. So I'm just going to hit, and it's going to try to basically uh, you know correct things on its own. It really did not make too much of a difference. Again, either I can hit this little door-like icon, which shows me before and after on top, or just like before, we can hold long press and see the difference. Yeah, you can see just kind of brighten the uh, photograph a bit, but usually it's not really going to do too much. Uh, so we're not really going to use it. If you hit that star that you see, I'm not going to show you, but it's basically going to take us to a place where it shows the premium options. That means to how to purchase this app, just like we saw with Lightroom Mobile. Okay, it has a different pricing point. You can check that out. And of course, if you're using a paid plan, like the main photography plan, and then just like last time I showed you in the first video, this app is also included in your plan, okay? So a lot of ways to get access to the premium version. Right now we are on the free one. If I hit next, as I'm gonna do once I've finished editing the photo, it's just gonna take us to the last screen where we can add watermarks and do all these things and you know, dip, um, select the quality of the image and share it on social media or save it to our phone. So pretty simple, okay? Coming back to the bottom part, this is where most of the editing will take place. By default, we come to this looks panel, which is nothing but a filters panel, nothing really to see here. I can just go through the filters like this and we are so used to these kind of things even in the most basic apps. We are not interested in this. You can definitely use it later on if you like one of these. We want to do this manually, okay? So again, what we will do the objective here is to kind of, you know, no pun intended, but spice up this shot, okay, a bit. So we're going to uh, be using certain things, split toning and all these things are available here. Clarity will be very important as we're going to find out because that's going to add a lot of texture. So we're going to make this whole photograph grungy. That's the object. And that is the word, grungy. Okay, because that's how pizza shots, that's when pizza shots look the best. So let's start. So we're going to go to the panel which says, we'll start with crop. I usually like to start with crop because if we have any particular crop idea in mind, according to the social media platform, then we already do that first and then we are seeing the image in those proportions and then I like to edit, okay? So even the crop is in between, I would like to start off with that. So now here you can see, remember I told you that Photoshop Express definitely has that design element in mind, okay? So remember in Lightroom Mobile, we didn't see this. It's actually telling you the purpose of the crop. So do you want to use it for a Facebook profile cover? Like, you know, the kind of cover that you have behind the profile picture, that big image, okay? So it's already gonna use those proportions. We didn't have this in Lightroom Mobile. You wanna use it as your business page cover on Facebook. Do you wanna use it as a profile picture? You can see there are a lot of ones, right? Uh, some of them are, to be frank, outdated. That's why I would not really recommend that you use them because apart from teaching photography, one of the things I do is I also teach digital marketing and the very fact that it is telling me when I click on Facebook ad, it's showing me this means it's outdated because the current Facebook ads actually follow the square format. So yeah, just be a bit careful, but I think with most of the social media, this shouldn't be too off, okay? Like LinkedIn background and all this, you kind of get the art, okay? So, so let's say if you were designing all this for a book cover, like a Kindle cover, you can crop it accordingly, okay? So let's see what we will be doing here is, maybe we can just give it a manual crop. So let's say, I'm just gonna crop it a bit. So to be frank, cropping is not really required here, okay? So yeah, I think that is fine. Then once we're done with our crop, I can even use tools like rotate if it was not straight and transform, where I can like, you know, kind of skew it up a bit. Think of it like a mini version of geometry, okay? So you can try that. You can even try using the full auto version. If you were editing a real estate image and you probably found that the lines were not straight, but to be frank, it won't work as good as geometry. This is just a mini tool here, okay? But you have all these things. The main thing is the aspect ratio. Now, the main editing starts on this panel which says adjustments, okay, on the left here. And it's kind of laid out a bit differently, that's all. It's exactly the same settings as you're gonna find out, just laid out a bit differently. So. First of all, we have selection tools, but as you can see, there's a star right next to it. That means this is a part of the premium feature. So you can see, just by one click, I can either select the background or I can select 
the subject is kind of creating a mask okay but if I was to proceed after doing this it won't let me do it it will just take me to the premium screen because this is a part of the premium feature so we are going to select none here okay we are going to go to adjustments and under adjustments now you see we kind of get the same aspects or the same tools okay so you can see this time this first one is clarity and you just get one slider to play with it okay so clarity definitely we want to use it here so we just are going to increase you can see any food shot one of the main things we always do it is to get the texture out and clarity is I almost use it on most of my food shots unless and until the subject of the or the food item is supposed to be very soft in nature okay but usually to get the texture out you're going to use this you can immediately see before after makes a huge difference not just on the pizza but actually on the wooden surface behind also okay so you can do that now this is where the premium features can really help you because right now we're using clarity right but can you see on top we still have that subject and background thing the masking available so while using this also if I had the premium feature I could have said okay restrict this only to the subject so you can see here I can just hit this anytime I'm using one of these adjustment functions I can hit this icon and it's going to bring up the masking options and it's going to say okay do you want to apply it only to this part but we can't really do that so whatever we do with adjustments right now on our free account will be universally applied to the whole image but whenever you see this option sometimes it's not there that means the setting that you're working with will only apply universally but when you have this option and you tap it and it opens up like this that means you can mask the subject and the background we're going to select none because we are not on the paid plan okay but you already know how masking works then we have sharpening which definitely again we can use it because you know here the main thing is is We really want to get this sharpen this texture but not too much because then that's going to add a bit of noise so can you see just by clarity and sharpen we are really sharpening those little textures and they kind of make the whole surface appear very uh, shiny okay like with those specular highlights and this just looks good especially on things like uh, you know patties pizzas burgers anything that has a lot of texture then you can if it added too much noise you can definitely remove noise and this is the luminance noise something similar to what we saw in Lightroom of course you don't want to do that because then that's going to blur out the details also and here we did not have too much noise so I don't want to do it you can see here if I just bump it up just see can you see we just lose that texture we don't want to do that on a food shot okay uh, if you had color noise like we saw before if you were shooting at night time and you were noticing a lot of colored hot pixels because of the hot sensor you can use it in this shot I don't think so we have that problem uh, we have a dehaze slider remember dehaze but it's a part of the premium slider so we're not going to use it but basically it's going to add or reduce contrast okay do we want to deliberately add some grain to it no we don't want to do that that is sometimes done to create a retro look to deliberately add noise okay but I don't think that's really going to work in this particular shot can you see it just makes the whole image very grainy and it almost feels like then it has been shot at a higher eye so probably food photography is not the correct genre to add but if you had a portrait you want to give a vintage faded look and wanted to add some grains just like a film like look you can do that from here okay then remember in one of our portraits before in Lightroom mobile we used the the fade slider right but we did that using curves but here we have an adjustment called fade and we can just fade the shot a bit and this is something I want to do okay so can you see it just kind of gives it like this faded look which is really nice it just decreases the contrast similar to pulling that curves shadow slider towards the left like we did last time okay so I think this is looking good so let's see the before and after you can see it was really looking basic now we're starting to add a lot of things to it okay then of course we have exposure <laughs> no app is complete without this setting so you can decrease or increase the exposure I think I was happy with the exposure so I'm going to keep it that way uh, contrast was already a lot we reduced the contrast by fading it so I'm going to keep the contrast same don't mind adding a bit of highlights just so that it uh, lightens up the cheese area and also the light the specular highlights on those on those vegetables uh, behind okay and we can definitely raise the shadows a bit just to get more out of the area behind 
I think I'll leave it, leave blacks as it is. Temperature, maybe we can warm this up a bit, just slightly, very, very slightly. Okay, but we'll do most of that in split toning, which is the next panel, which you're soon gonna come to. Is there any tint issues? So if you feel there was any magenta or greens, you can pull it either way. So I don't think there was any issue, so I'm not gonna really use this. I don't mind adding a bit of vibrance, just to get those colors out a bit. And saturation is probably not needed. So now, finally, we can move to the next panel, which is the split tone panel. Now, split toning is exactly the same as the color grading panel that we saw inside Lightroom, okay? It's just a more simplified version of that. Now, the, so you can basically move two things here. One is this little circle on the left, okay, that I can move here. So, oops, yeah, now I can. And can you see the moment I do that, these are the shadows. So what I'm moving right now is affecting only the shadows. Just like we had those circles in Lightroom Mobile, okay? And I can add any color that I pick out from this whole palette that's gonna add to the shadows. So let's do the same thing. Let's add a bit of blue to the shadows, okay? So now here's the thing. How do you control the saturation here? If you move towards the top, okay, it makes it really saturated, the color. And if you wanna take away, you say, no, I just wanna add the tiniest bit of blues, okay? Then you can just push it towards the black down. So anytime you take something down, that's gonna make it really subtle. That's how it works. And I actually love this way, this approach, as compared to that color wheel approach. That sometimes can get a bit messy to work with. I really loved this way, okay? That I can just pull it up and down. Just one thing to do here, okay? So let's say I just wanna add at least this much of blues. This also too much, maybe this much, okay? And for the highlights, which is this one, we're gonna add a bit of warmth. So you must be thinking, Kush, why do we do that? Like, you did the same thing in the last portrait image also. Like, why don't we do the opposite? Now you can, because this is color grading. Remember I told you, color grading is subjective, but orange or this warm yellow tone and blue are complementary colors. That gotta do something with the color wheel theory and how these things go together. But this usually looks very pleasing to the eye when the highlights are warm and the shadows are cool, okay? Because they are complementary colors, yellow and blue. Kind of, we touched upon that when we even saw the primary and subtractive primary colors, right? Remember, they were like a couple, blue and yellow. So think of it like this. Those couple colors go together, okay? But again, we don't wanna add this much, right? That's too much, so push it down here. Yeah near the black, but at least this much, okay? And maybe even make it more saturated, yeah. But you can see, I'm making the color more saturated, but the degree of the color saturation is not much because it's still, I'm not pulling it towards the ceiling. It's still towards the, near the floor. So near the floor, less saturation. Towards the ceiling, higher saturation, okay? And this slider in between, if you'll remember from Lightroom Mobile, remember we had that balance and the bl blending sliders, this is kind of both combined into one. Now that I've got my shadows and the highlight colors, which one do I want to favor? If I don't want to favor and want to keep it 50-50, I leave it as it is. But let's say, no, I want to, you know, kind of bias, be biased towards the highlights, and it's just going to do this, remember? Make, so it's going to make the highlights more warm, or I can make the shadows more cool. So this is kind of even, you can use the slider to correct something that you did here and kind of balance things out. So maybe I feel, Something like, I don't mind making it a bit warmer. Pizza just look good, okay, like that. So, so let's see the before and after. Yeah, you can see. It looks nice and faded and vintage now, okay. Uh, we can also, we have the HSL slider, which is similar to that color picker that we saw, or make color mix rather, the color mix panel in Lightroom Mobile. So we can work individually on certain colors. And I would like to do that here because if you definitely must have noticed that leaf in the center of the pizza is very distracting because it looks overly saturated. So I'm gonna hit the green color and then I'm simply gonna turn the saturation down, okay? Like this. Do I wanna add? on the saturation probably for orange because there's a lot of orange in it. I don't mind adding the luminance also, making it brighter. So right now still green is select. Yeah. So you can see, we're kind of just getting those details out by increasing the luminance, but just a bit, okay? And I want to saturate it a bit. So 
Boom. So now that leaf, it doesn't seem too distracting, okay? So I think this is working out to be fine. One more option that we have is blur here, okay? This can really, really help us, especially in full shots. Usually I'm not a fan of creating a fake depth of field, like a fake blur, okay? It just doesn't look good, but in full shots are an exception. Sometimes you can get away with it, okay? Because what you can do here is, because usually we're used to seeing food shots in which the food is sharp and anything placed behind is kind of blurred. So if you already did not have enough of it, what you can do is wherever you move this circle, that basically is gonna be sharp and the other areas like this, if I move this slider, will become blur. But of course, we don't want such a small area to be sharp, so you can move the arrows and make these two circles big. The first circle is where the sharpness is and the second circle, the area between them is the feathering. That means how gradual is the change from sharpness to it being blurred. So kind of keep this much of a distance is fine, but the important thing is make it big because we want most of the pizza to be sharp, right? Like something like this. But we don't want, so maybe slightly lesser than this, like this, maybe even lesser. Okay, something like this is fine. And then we can blur those vegetables the, and the other things behind, okay? Like even the thing, so you can see. I don't want to pull it all the way because then it kind of looks very fake, okay? But at least add a bit of blur so that the eye of the viewer goes directly on that center part of the pizza, which is the main selling point of this shot, okay? So, also, the so right now we are working on the radial blur. You can also experiment with the full blur. Okay, right now I don't want to disturb this image too much, so I'm going to hit radial, but you can see that if I do it, it's just going to basically blur most of the, the, almost the entire image, okay? So I'm happy with the radial blur because it helps you selectively blur also. And we can also, just to draw the eye of the viewer towards the center, we can definitely apply a vignette, which is the next option. So we're just gonna darken the corners a bit like this, makes it even look more grungy. And finally, we have optics, okay? Where right now the lens profile is not available. It anyway is an advanced feature, but you already have seen this in Lightroom Mobile. If there were any distortions because of the lens you were using, it would detect the lens first, then correct those distortions and also remove the chromatic aberration. So you can see how quick this app is.